this video is about was your grandpa wrong for killing big fish it's a follow-up to another video I've done it's more in depth uh, a lot of people don't get it they don't see what I see they don't think how I think and they simply don't get it and this puts this whole uh, big fish conservation thing more in perspective on how I think <clears throat> you know uh, people don't understand because they grew up fishing with their grandpa they seen their grandpa catch these big fish take them home and clean them that's what they were taught so to them that is okay and to your grandpa that is okay but we're going to explain why that was okay for your grandpa and not okay today first of all in your grandpa's day there wasn't that much pressure very few people fished for catfish and the ones that did really didn't know what they were doing big fish were caught by accident even in my day when I went out catfishing you hardly ever seen another soul doing it now when I go catfishing I see other cat fishermen every time I go every day I go people local people from out of state these fish are fished for constantly by way more people by people with knowledge gear to land the fish how to catch the fish where to find the fish uh, modern electronics uh, way more boats and just way more time on their hands in Fisherman magazine I stated that that's what started the death of the Cumberland River the Tennessee River Fort Loudon mainly and I don't remember what all lakes they put in those articles but I'm sure those people if they were within driving distance of other people probably felt some serious pressure after that I know Sandy Cooper in the 1980s was had a tremendous amount of fish in it and now locals will tell you it is not what it used to be you hardly ever see Sandy Cooper put out the big fish that it used to uh, it puts out much less numbers much less big fish just like here just like a lot of places places that are putting out the big fish now are the places that didn't get all the pressure didn't get all the uh, social media attention speaking of social media how powerful is it first of all you have Facebook uh, that's where a lot of these people find out where to catch fish who caught the fish uh, a lot of these people will post where they caught the fish people will recognize landmarks buildings uh, people will look that person up and see what town they live in look what river they're on uh, next thing you know they're there YouTube YouTube is extremely powerful influencers such as myself many others I am a fairly successful channel and there are some much larger than me uh, people like catfish and carp with a million subscribers your grandpa didn't have all that going on back when he was catfishing one guy left a comment on my latest video some guy named Van Winkle he stated that I was awful proud of myself that my perception of whatever power I had due to my celebrity status um, just didn't have that much impact well mr. Van Winkle last time I checked my channel has had 17 million views if 17 million catfishermen come to Fort Loudon Reservoir if 17 million people were to catch one catfish at a Fort Loudon Reservoir do you not think that would have an impact on the fishing there he says residential people uh, have no impact at all really maybe not back in in fishermen's day but here again every day I go out I see other cat fishermen local at a state not just on weekends I can go out any day of the week there they are times weren't like that back in in fisherman magazines day I remember back then uh, 
you know, if you went to a boat ramp, there was nobody there. If you was blessed enough to get off work on a weekday, you was the only guy on the water. It ain't that way no more. These boat ramps are packed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Your grandpa did not see that in his day. Back in his day, people probably worked their butt off six days a week, some seven days a week, and uh, fishing time was little. I am connected with a lot of people on social media. I am a part of some large catfish groups, even though I don't comment much on there. I see the posts on these groups. Most of these groups are kill everything you catch orientated because those kind of groups are going to get the most members. That's why YouTubers promote Catch and Cook, uh, all the different things they promote to make their channel bigger. You know, they know pe people's always asking me to do Catch and Cook, always. I don't do it. Oh, it'd make my channel bigger. I'd get more views, but I don't do it. But everybody will do anything it takes for a little bit of greed. Another reason these catfish have way more pressure than in your grandpa's day is the modern electronics. The fish finders on these boats are incredible nowadays. You can literally look at the bottom of a lake, and I've seen some of these guys' screens. They can actually pick out big catfish on the bottom on these big screens in these modern electronics. Your grandpa did not have that technology. Anybody, I can go on my phone, I can click on an avionics app, and before I go fish a reservoir, anywhere out of town, as long as it's barge navigatable waters, waters that will hold big fish basically, I can scour the bottom right here in this chair, right up there in my bed before I go to sleep. I can learn the bottom of that lake before I ever go there. Uh, before I went to Alabama or any of these places, I got right on my phone and said, hmm, that looks good. I'm going to fish here. I'm going to fish here. I'm going to fish here. Everybody has this. All these cat fishermen have this. Your grandpa did not have that. There was not that many people fishing for catfish that had that technology back in your grandpa's day. Fish patterns, uh, just way more technology, people knowing what catfish will do during certain seasons of the year, uh, wintering holes, you know, people have found out, these commercial fishermen have found out, these ice fishermen have found out that in these cold waters, the flathead catfish will all pile up together, every fish in a long section of river in one hole, and they will pick those fish off in the winter when those fish are in their dormant state. It's become real popular up in Michigan for these guys to cut holes in the ice over the areas and guys snag these fish and pretend they're catching large catfish. I've seen some guys on a Tic Tac video bragging about the number of flatheads they caught and they had about 30 flatheads through the ice. Us real catfishmen know better. Uh, that is snagging a dormant fish, pretty much just poaching or whatever, you know. But your grandpa did not have that back when he was fishing for catfish. Another thing that's uh, taken a lot of big fish is noodling. Here you go. Here's an example of social media, the power of social media, and people with grandpa's mentality that you kill everything you catch. We have people like Hannah Barron, huge, huge social media star out there noodling catfish. Now, I'm not going to say this is facts, but it seems like when I first started looking at her, they were keeping those big catfish that they were noodling off the nest. You take the male off the nest, the nest is gone. Not only did you kill that big fish, you killed the nest. They are guarding the nest for a reason, so all the small aquatic life don't come in there and eat the eggs. Uh, so when you do that, you're killing a lot of fish by pulling a fish off the nest. Well, I think Hannah Barron had some flack recently from a uh, modern CPR fisherman. And I seen a recent video she done where she was actually putting fish back in the water and coming back later and catching them back out to prove they had went back on the nest. Well, you know, 
That's true, they will do that, but are you putting them back to do that? And the problem is, is that you're teaching all these people that at a certain time of year, you can find these fish uh, noodling while they are on the nest, and they're not going to leave. You're going to stick uh, your hand in there, and, you know, they're there. They're going to grab onto you. <laughs> defending their nest, you know, or what. Either way, it teaches people right where to find these big fish, however it's done, okay? There's ways people can actually set boxes out and stuff for these fish to do that. They have the technology to do that. Whether it's legal or not, I don't know, but they're doing it because people don't care about laws. Either way, there is a huge amount of catfish now being caught, killed by these noodlers. That's where they go down under the water stick their hand up in there and they either grab the catfish or the catfish grabs them. Well, you've taught the whole world how to do this. And the problem is, is that so much of these people that are going to take advantage of that have grandpa's mentality that killing this big fish is not hurting the river, but you're showing millions how to do it. So that can have a huge impact on big fish populations. I mentioned something about Hannah Barron on a Facebook post. People, oh, you know, you're just putting her down, blah, blah. No, I'm not jealous of Hannah Barron. You know, I've watched her stuff. Uh, I've seen her playing guitar and singing one time. I think Hannah Barron is very talented. Uh, I think Hannah Barron is very good looking, smart. Uh, she's very successful in her business. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Hannah Barron. And maybe the water she's doing this in, those very southern waters, have, you know, a lot more fish in them. And it's harder to kill the population in those areas just because they aren't pressured as much. Either way, it's grandpa's mentality. You can't do that in all waters. And it is teaching people to do that in all waters. I don't have a thing against Hannah Barron, but the noodling thing is hurting big fish. Because not all these noodlers... Are releasing fish and here again even if they was putting the fish back with all that thrashing going around on there how much did that disrupt that nest you know how, did that destroy eggs we don't know either way you know those are your breeders those are your future fish for next year uh, so it has an impact especially now that millions of people know about it more pressure catfish tournaments some of these guys are uh, CPR groups. Some of these guys are not. We have a growing number of big catfish tournaments. They understand uh, that these big fish have to be put back. But there are catfish tournaments that are putting pressure on fish and killing fish. Uh, inadequate live wells. Keeping too many fish in an inadequate live well all day long, all night long for a weigh-in. Maybe too long out of the water at weigh-ins. Uh, a catfish is a big fish. You have to have a really big live well with sufficient oxygen to keep that fish healthy. So CPR guys, catfish tournaments, have killed many fish. What I have noticed is they have noticed this, many of the better ones, and they have addressed the situation and are making improvements. But here again, even the catch and release guys in these tournaments have killed fish. How many catfish tournaments are there? They're every week on almost every lake that has big catfish. It is something that started, you know, within the last 20 to 30 years and gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and more popular and more pressure on these fish in just my lake alone with one group alone has an average of 50 boats every night of the week out there hitting every hole in the river is that not pressure yes it is pressure you know a lot of these cpr guys they're keeping two three or all the fish they can till the end of the day just so they can get a picture of them all at once you know is that necessary well, it looks good on them. It looks good on their pictures. It promotes them as a great fisherman. Here again, it's something that isn't really necessary, and it isn't to the best interest of the fish. 
The only times I have pictures of double fish or whatever is I, if I happen to have boated them at the same time. And here they are both laying in the boat. I don't catch one at 8 o'clock in the morning and keep him alive till I catch the next one at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And at 9 o'clock at night catch another one and then pose with all three of them. I don't do that. Some people do. Either way, I don't think it's good for the catfish. Modern laws are not adequate for today's pressure. These people have no idea how in just the last three years catfish has exploded in the amount of people doing it. As these rivers get depleted by uh, commercial guys for big pay lakes, all the guys that at, in that river system that want to fish for big catfish and don't have them there no more, well now they come down to my lake. So now we've not only got the locals fishing my lake, we've got all the guys from Ohio and Kentucky coming down here because their rivers got depleted and their rivers suck. So now we have the pressure of all those people and when those rivers suck, here comes the commercial pay lake guys down to my river. Now all this pressure is on my river and the cycle continues and it goes on down to the next reservoir and the next reservoir and they keep going and keep going until the fishing is no good no more. Your grandpa did not have all this going on back when he was catfishing. One thing I mentioned is, uh, you know, people are fishing more often, uh, more days during the week. Back in your grandpa's day, people worked six, seven days a week. And if you was catfishing, you didn't hardly see anyone else catfishing. If they was, they was throwing chicken livers or worms. People back in those days didn't have the knowledge they do now. It was after the In Fisherman magazine. That was the start of it all. They taught people like me, all these other YouTubers, uh, all these CPR guys, catfish. They taught all these people uh, this modern day catfishing. And the problem is, is now with all this knowledge, we're doing this more than one day a week. If I go to a boat ramp any day of the week, it is covered in boats. If I go to Watts Bar on Monday or Tuesday, I've got people from Ohio, Kentucky, waving at me. Hey, Catfish Dave. They watch my videos, another YouTuber's videos. The amount of pressure, even during the week, is incredible now. Uh, TWRA, when they made that one over 34 a day, unlimited under that limit, is not taking all that into consideration. Pandemic. Uh, I remember when that started, I was still working full time and uh, I had just gotten that first boat. I started fishing the Little River area. I was caught 70 pound blue that year there, uh, some 50 pound flatheads that year. But as I launched the boat every day, something I had never seen before and it was alarming was no matter what day of the week, no matter what time of the day you went out there, the banks were lined elbow to elbow with people that had never ever fished in their life because they were no longer working, they were shut down from work, they were getting paid to sit home, and they all bought fishing license. TWRA recorded a record number of fishing licenses sold during that time. And here's all these people out there fishing now that don't have the mentality of what happens when you kill these big fish. They remember what grandpa done with his fish and that's what happens. Uh, TWRA did not factor all that in when they made our laws or these other states factor that in when they made their laws protecting these fish. There is so much more pressure from every angle nowadays compared to when your grandpa was catfishing. When your grandpa was catfishing, commercial fishing really did not hurt big fish because commercial fishing back then was for restaurants. They wanted the small fish. They wanted to put the big fish back, not only because the restaurants did not want them, but they wanted big fish for breeders so that they could stay in business as a commercial fisherman. They're totally different than these pay lake fishermen that are robbing out the big breeder fish. Uh, I talked to a guide in Alabama 
you know there's a lot of commercial fishing down there but it's for restaurants they turn the big fish loose I was down in uh, Mobile Alabama I was talking to another guy his brother was a commercial fisherman he turned the big fish loose the restaurants would not take them so this is the way commercial fishing was in your grandpa's day okay they was leaving the big fish in the water your grandpa did not have the problem that we do today with these trophy catfish commercial fishermen robbing our lakes people claim it's your right it's legal well it might be your right but is it moral because if you know this is happening and you're killing everyone else's chances of enjoying the river in the future just because the law states that it's okay to do that well, people compare it to deer hunting or whatever wildlife deer is carefully managed by the states very carefully managed and you can grow a monster deer in four years a monster catfish you're looking at 20 to 30 years it is a totally different thing these catfish are not monitored by the state like deer and other wildlife so it's not even the same argument years ago before there was hardly any population in the United States Indians learned that you could wipe out wildlife different things and had some form of conservation even that far back in time the population now has increased uh, you know a million times there's way more houses in private land and people than there is water so we have to be mindful of all this back in your grandpa's day he didn't see any of this and so if he accidentally caught a big catfish or whatever and it went home it really didn't hurt anything because the few people that caught them back then weren't enough to hurt the river with the people doing it now there's enough to hurt the river so if everybody doing it now has your grandpa's thinking we're in big trouble one thing about your grandpa people back in them days had some morals they had some common sense if all this was going on back in your grandpa's day there's a good chance he let that big fish go I influence new fishermen they see me throw big fish back it influences somebody to do it and even if it's only 10% of the people that watch when they throw a big fish back somewhere on their waterway somebody sees them do it they may influence 10% and maybe we can keep that going I like these fish uh, having big fish in the water it is good for many things you know it's good for economies for years we benefited from all these travelers you know local business benefited motels restaurants all these people that came in here to fish for our fish were buying stuff from non fishermen people that owned all these businesses and those people would take their money and spend it on other local businesses it was good for the local economy uh, it wasn't just good for us cat fishermen to have big catfish it was good for everybody another reason it's good to have big fish in the water I'm just gonna be honest with you being into fishing like I was could have very well possibly kept me out of prison could have kept me from getting into other things uh, your biggest problems with uh, bad things going on is uh, basically where people are bored especially in some of these small towns people are bored they have nothing to do but if they have something out there to keep their mind occupied keep it healthy out there enjoying some fresh air sunshine instead of sitting home watching people kill each other on video games I think you can end up with a better person in life later on it's just a different kind of raisin it's a better raisin these big fish are good for a lot of things so uh, this will be my last video on the subject you know as long as these fish are out here for me to catch I'll keep making entertaining videos appreciate all those that watch and uh, I hope y'all take some 
consideration into what I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm.